In some aspects, this journal is going to act as an antithesis to my previous entry. Last time, I argued for the right to efficiently play the game. Player knowledge and experience is a hard-won battle, and they should be able to be used by the players to improve their current games. Today, I want to talk about inefficiency. Because RPGs have rules, they can be mastered. There are many people on the internet that focus their skills finding the best paths through the rules, and they do a fantastic job at it. The result of that mastery, though, is that the game master can always create a more challenging encounter to match the level of mastery. The unbalanced nature of the GM-player relationship ensures that no matter what, the game master can always outmatch the players if they choose to do so. It is that very paradigm that makes inefficient gameplay so important. Now, I'm not saying don't master the rules. The rules are a part of the game, and figuring out all of the dovetails in the system can be a ton of fun. The higher your mastery, the more shenanigans you can legitimately get away with without having to fall under the banner of, it doesn't really work like that, but the GM let me do it anyways. However, if the table is focused on efficiency all of the time, options become severely limited. If every point of damage is needed to win or every spell used has to be the best one for that situation, stress can rise while creativity falls. The importance of inefficient gameplay is about having breathing room, about allowing it. While I believe both players and game masters should embrace moments of inefficient gameplay, it is usually dependent on the game master. While players can choose to make suboptimal characters or story-driven choices, the behavior will quickly stop if they are punished for doing so. I recently had a player talk to me about a possible replacement character for a different 5e table that they're in. The concept that they are playing with is a Dampier Monk of the Long Death. They consulted with me on the character because they're having trouble figuring out what they would use their bonus actions for. Most of the time, monks default their bonus actions in combat to an additional unarmed strike with their martial arts feature. The issue here was the character stats. The player wanted to focus their character around using their vampiric bite feature. Interestingly, the Dampier's bite attack is based off of their constitution score. Wanting their long death features to work well, they also had to maintain a high wisdom. Focusing on con and wisdom, that pushed their dexterity pretty low on the list for having it be a main attack defense stat. On the whole, monks already need two high stats and the Dampier build was prioritizing something else. The character concept was fantastic. Its problems were mechanical. It was inefficient in build. The character itself is playable, any character is playable. The deciding point would come down to whether the Game Master's style would facilitate an inefficient character. That is why I say inefficiency can come from either side, but is dependent on the GM. While the players can force the Game Master to step up the difficulty to challenge the players, the Game Master is the one that sets the floor on how inefficient a table can be with characters and story choices. So what does Game Master inefficiency look like? For me, it falls into two groups, mechanics and stage setting. Similar to players, I shouldn't always make the mechanically best choices. Sometimes this is deliberate, though most of the time it's because I'm rushing. While I don't always openly state it to my groups, I do not use my monsters to their highest potential. I can make sure all of their powers are being used if I spend the time, but that's not usually my focus on their turn. Most of the time, I try to get through my monster's turns as fast as is reasonable to try to get back to the players and give them the spotlight again. It's not a guarantee that that's how I always play, but I found that that description fits my general combat MO most of the time. So, outside of reclaiming my mistakes as player breathing room, there are things I do deliberately do to have inefficient monsters. The biggest thing I do is attempt to set up some of my encounters in a way that aren't always the best for the NPCs. Uh, just last night, I ran a combat that pitted the players against a warband of orcs. There were almost 50 of them. The players were ambushing them in the middle of a long journey through the woods and the orcs were strung out in a long caravan. Mathematically, there were almost three times as many orcs as there should have been for a deadly encounter. 
In practice, the orc struck a middle ground in density that allowed for area of effect spells like fireball to take out chunks while still stringing them out far enough to allow the party to deal with them as they arrived as opposed to the entire band at one point in time. The inefficiency of the combat gave the characters leeway to deal with the threat without needing to have perfect choices on every turn. While there was still a danger for very bad choices or the swing of the dice, the overall lackluster setup on the orc's caravan's part gave the players room to make the choices they wanted without doom lingering over their heads. They got to be the heroes in the way they wanted without the danger of catastrophe on every single turn. Should this inefficiency be prominent in every encounter? By no means. But I do believe it is important to have as a perceivable part of the ebb and flow of encounters over time. This necessity was highlighted to me when I was running the official campaign Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. Without fully realizing it, the beginning of the game was an absolute meat grinder. Spoilers for the next 20 seconds or so, but they're not that big. In the middle of the first dungeon, full of enemies, there was an encounter with a spellcaster that had fireball. The dungeon is meant for second level adventurers. I don't care what your party makeup is like, at level 2, that is a TPK. Or at least, it's a TPK unless you come up with some narrative gymnastics as to why the caster either doesn't have those spell slots or isn't prepared to use them against the party. In the end, inefficient gameplay can be a requirement to reasonably get the party out of certain binds. Just because you can do something as the GM doesn't necessarily mean that you should. It is developing moments of relative ease that then allow the players to not be playing a high-stakes puzzle the entire campaign. Of course, all of this is from the perspective of someone who likes to balance having the players earn their accomplishments with a story-heavy game. A table full of mechanics junkies could rightfully find all of this an argument for easy mode, which could be what it is. <laughs> Either way, this entry is meant to be a slightly distorted counterpoint to my previous. Yes, there's merit to learning the game and getting better, but even without questionable encounter design, it is okay to look at what the tested optimal path is, and then turn your back on it for something else. The balancing point is to make sure that you are in an environment that has the breathing room to do so. And this is my sending, Kenku. Find the level of breathing room that you need and maintain it. Greater expectations and stress are good, but only if you can maintain boundaries. It happened. 